Hello everyone, this is Sharpedo43 once again, bringing you all another Wi-Fi battle. In this battle, yeah, as you can see, we're going back to the OU tier once again, but there's a very, very good reason for that actually. Because my opponent for this battle is actually going to be someone that I've been trying to showcase on this channel for quite a long time, so that way you guys get to know who the who the hell this person is, because I think you guys should know who this person is, because this person is a person of good faith, which I admire greatly from a lot of people. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, th my opponent in this battle is going to be a good buddy of mine by the name of Saltfire. So how do I, how did I met this Saltfire guy? Okay, well, I first met him in Doom Omega's um, stream. He was host, he was doing a tournament and um, he and I were both a part of it and we both actually managed to make it to the finals, which was actually kind of crazy. And the way he sounded when he was interacting with me, he just sounded very, very nice. So... Because of that, I was like, okay, I like this guy because he's actually giving me positive. Because usually in tournaments, people are like, I'm going to kick your ass or something. Or they try to say, good luck, man, but I'm going to try to win or some shit. Like they, they give you some attitude like the, they're going to, they have like an overconfident attitude, which Soul, Soulfire did not show. By the way, I formerly knew him as Murkrow. And he was actually, he was just very nice. He was just like, to a good game, my guy. And I was like, thank you, dude. You too. And when I lost, because he did win the tournament, by the way. I was like, I felt, I felt perfectly fine. I was not even angry because the guy was just too nice that I just, there was just no way I could. Then I met him in Vanderforge's stream, and that's when I learned that he was also a mod there. So I was like, holy cranberry! So this guy has a lot more connections going on. And then much time later, I learned that he was actually a streamer as well. And then this is when I started to battle um, Saltfire a lot of times, and we've battled multiple times in the past. But unfortunately, a lot of these battles happened when these damn patches came along. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to showcase. This is my only battle that I was able to showcase against Soulfire right here. And it's a pretty good one in my opinion. I don't know about him, but I thought it was a pretty interesting one. At least, if not good, at least interesting. But yeah, this is going to be my buddy Robert. He's going to lead off with Nightwing, which is the Greninja. It's a Scarf Greninja, as you're going to find out right here. I'm gonna lead off with Zapatos, which is my shoes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Zapdos. <laughs> and I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch. This is how I instantly realized that this thing was Choice Scarf, because he goes for spikes and outspeeds my scarfed um, Zapdos. So I go for Volt Switch, it fails. I could have just stayed in here and gone for another Volt Switch, but my concern was that he would just try to stay there and go for three layers of spikes and whatnot, and I just won't be able to switch out, because I won't be able to Volt Switch, so yeah. I hard switch and went into the side eye here and he goes into a Moongus so I was like oh man this is actually a bit of a problem because um, I my team kind of doesn't answer Amoongus very well actually so I'm gonna go for the U-turn right here and what I'm gonna do is actually try to put my um, Pokemon Zygarde to sleep like I, I knew this thing was gonna try to go for Spore because there's nothing I can really do with the side on this on this um, Among Us. So I just went into Zygarde to take a Spore. He actually went for Stun Spore, so I was like, oh, so maybe he doesn't even have Spore. Okay, this is good. So I go back into the side and what I'm going to do is just play the Switch Around game, basically. So, and then here is when he re reveals Spore, and I'm like, yo, are you running dual status Among Us, my guy? That's actually kind of crazy. Because, I mean... It, it, it's crazy because I mean he can actually put something to sleep and then paralyze something else and that one something else can be Sharpedo and I'm like oh this could be kind of complicated and not to mention this entire battle like um, battle like centers around Among Us and it's difficulty to get around because like I said my whole team doesn't really answer it very well I have Skarmory but if this thing has hidden power fire is when it starts to get a lot complicated here as you can see he tried to go for going for stun spore again and I just stayed in because I don't know why and then I'm just gonna go back into Zapdos here. Like, I think here I just played like a switch around kind of game. I just wanted to see what his tendencies were at this point. Because I literally felt like that was all I can literally do to this thing. Because I don't have anything to answer it. Once this thing starts to get chipped down enough, it's going to just switch out due to the regenerator and get a lot of its HP back. So, I was kind of in a pickle here. I just kind of was going around in circles here with the side OI and Zapdos here. Because I was trying to think, what, what should I do here? Because, like, I, I know what he wants to do, but, like, I just don't know what to do to get around it, to prevent him from getting his way here. So I was like, oh, great. What am I going to do here? Um, what I do here is just keep going for the U-turn. Like, I, I honestly... You know that this is how, how I usually handle my situations. I just do some stuff 
so that I don't keep the opponents just waiting because if there's one thing I don't like is when people are wasting too much time just thinking about things. I don't like to do that myself personally, so yeah. Here I finally decided to just um, send in Zapdos to take a Spore. I was actually trying to predict him to go for Stun Spore again, but if he goes for Spore, I was like, okay, so be it. So I do switch out, go into Goldeneye, and now I have to see what other moves he has on this thing. But he's actually going to switch out and not reveal anything yet. So he's going to go into Joe Thornton, which is his guard chump. Now, from past battles that I've had with Soulfire, his guard, his Joe Thornton has always been Scarf. So I was thinking he'll maybe um, be Scarf once again. But he shows Stealth Rock, so I was like, oh, so maybe not. This could be Bulk Chomp then with Rocky Helmet. I go for a U-turn here because I thought I would just take the Rocky Helmet damage. And in fact, I do. So this means that this thing is also not Rocky Helmet. But it also gives me the impression that maybe it could be Dragonium Z. Because I don't see him running Z move on anything else on his team, honestly. Maybe this Tapu Koko has Electrium Z. But um, I wasn't so sure. I went into Skarmory because I was like, I could definitely deal with this. But then he um, uh, switched out, obviously. The, the Guard Chomp went into Tapu Koko and I just went for Brave Bird. Because for some reason, I kind of thought he would just have a fire move for my Skarmory. But seeing I just switched out... I was like, no, maybe not then. So what I'm going to do now is just switch out, obviously. Go back into Goldeneye, who can definitely take a hit from this thing. Um, as long as it's not hitting Power Ice. And even then... Yeah, he goes for Dazzling Gleam here. And looking at this damage, I was like, holy cranberries. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the phone here. This is not what I think it is. So what I'm going to do here is switch out into my Swampert, who should be able to take under half of HP from this Dazzling Gleam from past experiences. And as you can see, it does a little bit more than I expected. So I was like, okay then, this thing is clearly choice specs. This is something I have not seen since that one battle I had with that one person that I will specify later. And um, this is when I was like, okay, this gave me an idea. Because now I can actually play around his Tapu Koko as well because it's choice. Usually when bonds are choice, you can easily play around them just by knowing what moves they're going to try to go for. But yeah, I decided to switch in um, Amoongus here, and he's going to switch out the, what's it called, and go into Tesla Rust T, which is actually kind of funny. This is, once again, another shout outs to Tesla Mouse, a guy who's very good at battling and likes to use um, very try-hard teams. But yeah, um, he's going to go into this thing. I was just trying to burn turns of sleep with this thing, because honestly, I feel like that's literally all I can do with this thing, as long as it's asleep. Uh, there was a change of plans here for me. I figured that if I can get the Spore on my Swampert, which is kind of useless because it, as long as that Amoongus is around, I really can't really do anything. So I figured why not. So what I'm trying to do here is just try to burn turns of sleep. He actually went for U-turn on my Zapto, so this allowed me to burn even more turns. But unfortunately, this thing actually has Rock Slide, this um, Greninja, which I wasn't expecting, honestly. Uh, either way, though, I think I just stayed in just to freaking sack the Zapdos because ultimately I just figured, nah... There's nothing I can really do, honestly, with this Zapdos as long as it's asleep, so, yeah. And it didn't wake up there, so I was like, okay, let's just let it go then. Because I don't have a lot of switch-ins either, so... Here, because he locked himself into Rock Slide, because I know this thing is Choice Scarf, I decided to just go straight for an Earthquake right here. Because I figured it's, it's very, very necessary. Or, not, 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 um, Earthquake, Scald. The reason why I went for Scald here was so I can get the burn on this Amoongus if I could. And I thankfully did get the burn. And this matters a lot, because now this negates his Black Sludge. Because, honestly, um... This Among Us is really, really annoying. So what I'm going to do here now is switch out because my Swampert, I still... I, I want to I wanted to proc its Yap up a berry once again. So I was I was trying to preserve it to see if I can actually get that to work. And he's just going to go for Clear Smog right here. And I was like, huh. Now this is interesting. Because now I think here with the side of I, I think I just try to go for Leaf Blade. It's either that or U-Turn once again. I don't know. But I, I think I do try to Leaf Blade because, again, I don't have much for this Among Us. Like, this Among Us is really the biggest problem in this team right now. Like, even more so than the Tapu Koko because the Tapu Koko, I can just play around it. But this, I can't. He's going to go into Dogtooth, which is this um this Mega Mawile. And I'm just going to go for the Leaf Blade. So, yeah, I did go for Leaf Blade because I was about to give up right here saying, okay, so far you win this match. Because, holy cranberries, this, 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 this Among Us I really had nothing for. I don't even think I had um, Psychic Fangs on Sharpedo. Actually, no, I think I did, but it was just remaining too healthy that I didn't think it would be able to KO it from where it was at. He's going to go for knockoff here on the, um, on the what's it called, Mega Evolution with Mega Mawile. And I just stayed in because I didn't want to risk this thing just trying to set up Swords Dances, so I just kept going for more Leaf Blades to get as much damage as I can. But now I get a free switch into Zygarde, who, unless he wants to go for Sucker Punch, is not going to be able to take anything from this thing. 
he is actually going to um, let his Mega Mawile go down, so I was like, okay, that's that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Because he knows he has no switch-ins. Like, he can send in Lando T, but I, maybe he thinks that his Lando T is useful. Because he will get the Intimidate off, but it's going to take a lot of damage as well, honestly. So here he's going to go into Joe Thornton once again. And then he's going to double switch because he knows I'm going to switch out because I honestly don't want to stay in with his um, Zygarde, honestly, knowing that this thing can actually be my win condition, honestly. Because this thing, being Choice Bandit, is actually really dang powerful, I'm not going to lie. So here I'm going to go into Iron Beak instead, which is an okay switch. Like, I still got an ideal matchup here because what, what is this thing going to do? Set up Swords Dance and then go for the um, Supersonic Sky Strike if it carries that? Nope, it doesn't It doesn't even carry that because the Landers T is actually left over, so that's actually even better for me, honestly. So what I'm going to do here is send in Swampert to take a possible U-turn, and he does go for U-turn, which is excellent because now, yap up a berry time. And now my Swampert has a lot of HP again. And what I'm going to do here is, he's going to definitely go into Amoongus, because Amoongus literally just answers me. Now here I'm going to make a risky play. I'm going to go for Earthquake, because honestly, there's nothing I can do to this Amoongus, honestly. And I'm going to predict him to go for the, the Spore. If he goes for Giga Drain and just takes out my Swamp or well then good for him, honestly. So I'm just going to go for the Earthquake and just get as much damage as I can on this Amoongus. Maybe I can put it in Sharpedo Psychic Fang's range, so... Yeah, there's that, but I'm go he's actually going to go for Spore. Now, this is excellent, because now he can't put anything else on my team to sleep. He can't make my uh, Skarmory invulnerable, and now I can just um, phase at will, basically. So now that I have this thing asleep, I'm going to switch out, go into Skarmory. Now, here what I want to know is um, if he actually carries the um, Hidden Power Fire. His last move is Giga Drain, so he has Clear Smog, Giga Drain, Stun Spore, and Spore. So he does not have Hidden Power Fire, therefore, I do feel like I have in fact the advantage over him now. Because if he had Hidden Power Fire on this thing, then I could have been in big trouble. But because he doesn't, now I'm free to just set up these spikes. And honestly, there's really not much he can do about it. Like, the only thing he could have done was hard switch into Tampa Coco, but what if I predicted him and just phased him again? Because I did have Stealth Rocks up, I believe. So... Him trying to switch out w wouldn't go unpunished. If there was no hazards up on the field, I would have been able to... Then I could have probably been in trouble because then Tapu Koko would just come in every single time. But he's going to switch it right here, right now. But as you can see, this is exactly what I mean by I'm just going to be able to whirlwind him here, honestly. He's going to take rocks damage and spikes damage, which is good for me. And I'm just going to whirlwind because I did predict him to want to switch out. But again, there's really nothing much he can do, honestly, here. Uh, when it comes to Skarmory being able to phase, I put my Swamper to sleep. That was what I wanted so that he doesn't have to um, put my Skarmory to sleep, which was my biggest concern. Now here he's going to go for um, Swords Dance with his Guard Chomp. I guess because he figures that there's really nothing he can do, because if he, if he doesn't have a fire move for my Skarmory, then he's not going to be able to do anything to Skarmory, period. So yeah, the Skarmory is kind of walling him and is also outplaying the Tapu Koko way too good right now. Which is actually kind of interesting because I've never seen my Skarmory do this amount of work, honestly, in a battle. Especially with Mons that can kind of check it, like um, Amoongus with Hidden Power Fire. Which, by the way, thanks to that, I was able to handle his Amoongus a little bit better. And then the Tapu Koko, which can just simply come in and proceed to do some crazy business, basically. Here I phase them once again into Landers T. It takes Rocks damage, which is pretty okay for me. He's gonna go for a U-turn once again. He just does. He can't find a way to get through this Skarmory, which is really, really getting on. Is probably getting to him at this point, unfortunately. But again, it's because I do want to win. Like every time I battle Soulfire, we usually have very, very intense battles, and this was one of them because I honestly was in a pickle because I thought I couldn't do anything to this Amoongus. But because it has no hidden power fire for my Skarmory, I feel like I can just get away with setting up more hazards. I went for spikes here, risking the possible switch back into the Tapu Koko just because I felt like he was gonna go back into this thing, honestly. Because he knows that this was the thing that was giving me problems, so he was maybe hoping that I would still think that um, he didn't have, um, or that he'd had Hidden Power Fire, but I already was aware that he didn't have it. So I got my third layer of spikes up here. Once again, there's nothing he can really do about it because he doesn't even have a hazard remover, so it's not like he can even go into that and just get rid of all the hazards. Like here, the only thing I'm trying to do now is set up all the hazards so that everything that comes in can just take damage, and then my Sharpedo can just come in and um, wreck everything. That's kind of the plan right now, especially now that I know that the Samungas can't really do anything. He goes for Giga Drain because he now knows that, like, literally, I can't. He can't just switch around anymore because all my hazards are up, and all, the only thing he's gonna get is um, a lot of hazards damage. So he's just gonna sack his Amoongus here and just um, um, get a better switch up, a better matchup, basically. So he's gonna wait for this um, Amoongus to go down now, 
And, um, yeah. I think after this, I think he goes into Tapu Koko. I think. I could be wrong, though. But I do think he goes into Tapu Koko. I'm gonna go for the Brave Bird just to finally finish off this Amoongus that never freaking died throughout the entirety of this battle because of that damn regenerator ability. So, yeah, um, finally that Amoongus is out of the way. That Amoongus was literally the one thing the, that was stressing me out through the entire battle, which is actually crazy. But as you can see, now he gets a free switch in, the Tapu Koko. But as you can see, these spikes and rocks are actually, like, putting him way too low. That at this point, I actually just stayed in and just took the um, Dazzling Gleam. Literally, because I do survive the Dazzling Gleam, and I'm just able to take out this Tapu Koko as well with a Brave Bird. So holy freaking cranberries, Skarmory just took out a Tapu Koko. The one thing that answers Skarmory just took out um, Tapu Koko, basically. That's crazy. So yeah, my Skarmory now survives. He's now going to send out Joel Thornton. Um, I'm, I just go for Brave Bird, because honestly, if he goes for the um, anything else, honestly, he'll just, um, like Swords Dance or something, he'll just... Um, die to recall anyway so yeah here um he goes for outrage instead so this is actually very very good for me because now i can just send in sharpedo i don't think his um garchomp is scarf i had to hope it wasn't because it'd be kind of weird if he had choice scarf with swords dance and stealth rocks honestly that'd be kind of crazy he does go for outrage he is locked in the outrage too not to mention so i don't i guess yeah i guess i was safe to go for it as long as this thing wasn't choice scarf it wasn't Scarf, so thankfully now I'm able to just go for the Ice Fang with Sharpedo and just take this thing out, which is excellent for me. And now I'm going to see what his remainder of his team is, and if he brings Greninja, I have to protect again, obviously. Because I know that Greninja's Scarf, so I need to make sure that my my Sharpedo has enough speed. In fact, I don't Mega Evolve just here, uh, here just yet, so because I know that I could use the additional speed. Or maybe I do, because I already had plus 2 speed. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> I'm a dumbass, yeah, because I only need a plus two to outspeed Greninja. I thought I didn't get plus two there, but I actually did, I just remembered. I go for Ice Fang here, and um, because of the Intimidate, I was like, okay, I gotta keep going for Ice Fangs. I got a Mega Vault, basically. This is what, this was the biggest reason why I Mega Vault, because I was thinking, you know what? He's probably gonna go, go into Lander's T, get the Intimidate off, and then um, lower my attack. So I'm gonna now have to Mega Vault to get that strong jump boost from Ice Fang, and still be able to take out this Lander's T. So, whew. That's one threat out of the way. Now, finally, this last threat, which is Greninja, Scarf Greninja. Which, if it locks itself in the low kick, I think my Swampert could just come in and take it out, honestly. But if he does, if he doesn't, then I don't know. I just go for Protect here to change its typing before I go for that Crunch, because otherwise it's going to resist a hit and then go for U-turn and take out my Sharpedo, which I didn't want. So as a result, now I'm just going to go for Crunch. And even at minus one, I am still able to take this out because Strongjaw was able to kind of negate the Intimidate, honestly. So, yeah, that's going to be a pretty good game, in my opinion, to Soul Fire. Because, yeah, that was that was a pretty good battle. It was pretty cool. Um, my Sharpedo got to do that late game, bleh, late game sweep. See, that's what I tell you. I can't even talk. But, yeah, my Sharpedo managed to get that late game sweep like, pfft, like I wanted to. And um, that actually made the battle kind of interesting. Like I said, this battle was actually really long, too. So, it was well played. There was a lot of plays here between me and Soul Fire. So, I was like, yeah, this battle is definitely interesting. I, I I I do think that um so far it didn't take well to this battle though. In fact that's kinda why he probably didn't say anything about it. But it's all good honestly. I personally still thought it was a good battle. I mean he was making a lot of plays and if I made even one mistake, um he could have brought it back. And honestly, this is why I wasn't holding back, because I was like, yeah, uh, if I make one mistake, if I do it if I do it with what I did um with the killer nacho, um and just try to make battles closer then I just lose battles sometimes that way. So, of course, I'm going to try to go full savage mode and win, obviously. Even if it's against my good buddy Soulfire, which... Yeah. yeah um, I mean, but this is, the, this is the thing I like about Soulfire. He actually doesn't get salty. He actually... He's just like, good game, man, good game. Like, he's just positive. Which is one of the things I admire about Soulfire, because he's actually positive regardless of how he, what conditions he's in in a battle. Because... For me, you guys already see how I am with battles when when they when they tend to be annoying. I get angry, I always scream, I always whine, I complain. So far doesn't do that. He actually does the opposite. He's very chill, relaxed, and very positive, composed even sometimes. So it's like, you know what? That's a that's a good fellow right there. A very, very good individual. So yeah, good game to Soulfire once again. And I'm gonna actually plug his um his Twitch stream, his Twitch link, and his YouTube channel 
in the description below so you guys can check him out because i honestly i honestly like this guy so and i i think if you guys get to know him you guys will like him too because honestly like i said if i a negative person admire someone like soulfire who wouldn't honestly so yeah anyways with all that thank you all for watching this battle and hopefully hope to catch you guys in the next one so yeah catch you guys later